Well, alright everyone, hopefully you were able to catch my most recent video, which was a 72 hours later with the Vision Pro, and for the most part, I was pretty awestruck. There's some nuance to that statement, there isn't all sunshine and rainbows, but it is a very cool device, and like I keep mentioning, if you have the ability to go book a demo, I highly recommend booking a demo to see exactly what it's all about. But in this video, what I want to do is give you guys seven tangible use cases that I plan on using most often, and I'm going to list these from my most used all the way to my least used, but these are seven use cases that I'm personally going to be using most often. Now, there are a bunch more use cases, and I will link some videos down below of some other awesome use cases that I've seen, but I wanted to give some people some ideas as to what to do with their brand new Vision Pro, or if you're planning on getting a Vision Pro. Without further ado, let's get into use case one, which is what I think is going to be the most common for the working at home individual or anybody that works at an office desk. Let's get into it. All right, so most of these are gonna be kind of on the content side, but the number one thing that I'm gonna be using the Vision Pro for from a productivity side is to use my Vision Pro as a secondary display or a secondary monitor to my MacBook. So as you guys can see, I'm gonna get rid of this kind of menu right here, or the dashboard, get rid of it. And if I look over to my MacBook Air, we should have a little connect thing that pops up, it recognizes it, we'll tap here, and basically it magically turns everything black and then gives you a large secondary display. So I'm looking over here, this is an AirPlay display from my MacBook. So all the compute and all the stuff that's happening on the computer side is still happening on device on the MacBook Air, but what basically is happening is that AirPlay is being used as a medium to then be able to, you know, have this Vision OS type interface. Now this is still Mac OS, like I'm using my peripherals, I have this Logitech mouse, my Satechi keyboard, if I go on here and start typing stuff out, you know, ESPN, if I can spell correctly. But as you can see, it works amazingly. Now, you can only have one external display running at a time. So even if you have like an M3 Pro or M3 Max, you will still be limited to one display. I originally thought it was just a limitation of my M2 chip because I don't have an M2 Pro or M2 Max. So as of right now, you can only have one external display. But again, you can move it as big as you want, make it bigger, like I said. I can grab it from the bottom and put it like above my head if I want to. And what's awesome is I can still even have other applications. So if I want to open up, let's say Safari over here, Safari does open. Let's grab this over here. And now I have Safari up there and then my window, actual computer right here. And I can actually bring this super close to myself if I want to, make it a little bit smaller. And look how small I can make my, my monitor. I can grab it if I want and bring it over to me. So it just kind of feels like magic. And this is how I'm going to be using it for most of the time. And I can envision a future where Everything in front of me is unneeded. Like I can just have this desk with like a three-in-one charger, maybe my headphone's still there, but then just have the laptop or the iPad, and then it's gonna work magically. As of right now, it only works for Mac OS. It does not work for any Windows computers. It does not work for iPad OS or iOS, and it does still work with Intel-based Macs, but only a few of them, and you are limited to 3K resolution, as opposed to with this one, this is 4K. So that's awesome to see. And last thing, this is not touchscreen but that is gonna be the number one thing that I use my Vision Pro for, especially when it comes to actual productivity tasks. So, to each their own. So if you're on the market for a Pro Display XDR and you have $5,000 to spend, I would probably recommend getting the Vision Pro instead of the Pro Display XDR because you obviously get way more functionality and you get a probably, maybe it's not a 5K display, but in my opinion, a better and more versatile display. But again, to each their own. Now let's go to reason number two. So reason number two, and I'm gonna overlay some footage right now from before, and the number two reason in personal use case that I'm gonna have for this is for sports consumption, right? So the NBA TV or NBA game application already works extremely well. I've been able to watch a lot of Miami Heat games and been able to see the dashboard at the same time. But then what I love about it is that you can have Twitter open, you know, you can have maybe a FanDuel application open. I know a lot of people love to get into the sports gambling world, which is to each their own. I don't really do that, but I know a lot of people wanna be able to have that casino-like dashboard where they have multiple games open at once to be able to see exactly what's going on and then be kind of looking at all their analytics at the same time in real time. So reason number two has to be sports consumption and everything that goes around it because it's so easy to navigate, so easy to use, and it's very enjoyable as well. And the speakers on this thing is one of the most underrated pieces of this entire ecosystem. So definitely give it a shot if you can. The next piece I'm gonna bring up has to be FaceTiming. FaceTiming is one of the things that I'm gonna recommend you do right away, that and also spatial video, which we'll get into in a second. But FaceTime has to be one of the best applications and user experiences of the Vision Pro because everything, even though it doesn't look real per se when it comes to the personas, I mean, it looks like a, I'm not even gonna say gamified version, it does look realistic e, if for lack of a better term, but it doesn't look cartoon-like, it doesn't look fully realistic, but it's enough to make you double think and maybe look again. 
But overall, FaceTime has been awesome. The depth of field is great. I mean, it's hard to kind of portray in this 2D environment that I'm showing you, but FaceTiming is one of the best things because not only obviously can you FaceTime, but you can FaceTime with multiple people. The audio of the FaceTime kind of changes when you're looking at somebody versus not looking at somebody. If you move the windows all the way back, they sound farther away versus if you bring it close to you, they sound much closer. So Apple's done everything right from a spatial awareness standpoint, from both a visual and audio perspective. Also, you can share exactly what you're viewing. So if you want to show somebody who isn't using a Vision Pro exactly what you're seeing, you can do that as well, as well as be able to share individual applications at once to be able to show off to whatever you're trying to show off when it comes to the Vision Pro UI and UX and the experience itself. But FaceTime has been absolutely amazing to use, and I'm going to definitely be using it more and more often because that's one of the best ways to kind of bring somebody into the Vision Pro world that doesn't actually have or is actually wearing a Vision Pro, in my personal opinion. So as I said, when it comes to FaceTime, I did want to talk about spatial video. Spatial video is something that, again, is very hard to portray in real time in this YouTube world because it's a 3D kind of content that you're going to want to consume with the Vision Pro. And there's multiple ways to actually take a spatial video content. You can actually do it with a 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max. Those are the only iPhones that currently that can support that because of the fact that they are using the cameras in the right orientation. You're able to take that 3D picture in 1080p. It doesn't record in 4K, but it does record in 1080. And they do recommend that you have the most amount of light possible. If you're in kind of a dark lit situation, it will tell you on the actual phone or it'll tell you on the Vision Pro itself, like, hey, you should actually probably find a better lit environment. Very similar to when portrait mode pictures were first introduced. But spatial videos is one of those trippy things that maybe if you've seen Harry Potter and you know that moment where they're looking at their memories, that's exactly what this feels like. It is absolutely absurd. Like, I haven't taken too many spatial videos from my actual Vision Pro itself, mostly from my iPhone, but it lets you see exactly what this memory was like. I've been taking spatial videos of my daughter and it's surreal to see how you kind of go back to that point in time and it feels like a memory, which is very, very weird. Some people might like that, some people might not, but I do wish that maybe 10, 15, 50 years ago we had this and then we can look back at these videos and see exactly what people kind of almost looked like and felt like in, in this space in real time. So spatial videos, is another one of those things about the Vision Pro that's just absolutely magical. Now, does it have an actual tangible productivity effect to you? Probably not, but it is still very cool to be able to re-experience something that you experienced in the past through this kind of spatial video environment. So the next one has to be all about immersion. We've spoken about FaceTime, we spoke about spatial video, and now let's talk about immersive content, especially the one that Apple has put out. So Apple on Apple TV, has, has, I think has like three or four different shows or kind of 20 minute exclusive content pieces where you can kind of go and get fully immersed. And it's tough for me to show that because it does black out the screen for copyright issues when I screen record it. But if I turn this knob right here on my Vision Pro, then you get fully immersed in this world, which you will be able to see. So you can see that here I'm in Joshua Tree. It is daylight and it does correspond to the time of day as well. So you're able to kind of see the sunset as it happens. But it's a fully immersed world where if you like look around where if you look around, it'll let you know, and you can see that it warns you. So if you do kind of get close to an actual something that you're gonna run into, it'll kind of take away this immersion, but you can kind of half immerse yourself as well. So if I wanna do a half immersion, I can do that. So this is my real situation, but you can still see Joshua Tree. Full immersion is here. And then also you can see that there's a little volume button there because also you hear kind of like the little critters and the wind and like rocks moving and all this stuff that's happening. And of course, you can still immerse yourself in whatever content you want. So this can be like almost your wallpaper to whatever you're doing. So if I wanna open, let's say, you know, the settings application, I now have that and I can move it over here. And it's just very cool to be able to do this. And they have a bunch of different ones, but I do recommend again, go book yourself a demo because the immersive video is what really sets this thing apart. It's absolutely amazing. And now the last two things I do want to mention in terms of how, what I'm using this for from a use case perspective. Number six has to be gaming. So gaming is very cool. Again, it's still light, a little bit limited in terms of what you can do. But if you are into Apple Arcade, you can definitely jump in there. And there's two forms of gaming when it comes to the Vision Pro. First is, is an immersive type of gaming. So it's games built for Vision OS. There aren't too many in Apple Arcade. There's a couple ones like some classics like Cut the Rope, Fruit Ninja. There's a couple like DJ ones, maybe like a Beat Saber competitor, things like that. And they are very cool, right? They're exactly what you expect. They're immersive games like Fruit Ninja is crazy. Fruit Ninja is like they're putting people and little things around you and it's very spatially aware. Now, it does take a little while to load, and the games still aren't perfect, but you can tell that it's using a lot of the horsepower from the computer in the Vision Pro, but when they work, they work extremely well. And the second type of gaming is your more traditional gaming, where you're using the window as an actual window to the game itself. For example, NBA 2K and Apple Arcade, it works with an Xbox controller or a PlayStation or an MFI controller, and you're just gaming on a 20-foot screen, and you're playing full-on NBA 2K, and that's just the beginning, because things like Xbox Cloud Gaming should be coming out here soon. We should be getting some form of a like Steam Deck with this ability to now have third party side loading and things like that. So gaming is just gonna get better and better on the Vision Pro. When it comes to Vision Pro specific gaming, 
And that's where maybe there still is a little bit more yet to be seen, but those are more proof of concept. Like, there's a cool Lego game. There's a cool kind of, like, you know, solitaire game or, you know, card game that looks like you're actually sitting at a poker table. All things that I highly encourage you guys try out. And then the last thing I want to mention is just overall multitasking. The amount of windows that I've been able to have open and have them open kind of confidently is absolutely absurd. Again, this is a tiny computer. This is the only thing that's computing right now is on your face. So the fact that I can have like 12, 15, 20 different windows open all doing multiple things at once is absolutely absurd. So the Vision Pro has been really, really nice when it comes to being able to kind of experience what the future should be like eventually, right? Not This isn't for everybody right away. There still are some learning curves. Like it's still not a productivity machine. I still wouldn't say like, hey, throw away your MacBook and only use this because there's a, a ton of use cases where your MacBook is still or your computer is still going to be far superior from a work perspective on the Vision Pro. But overall, it's just a very cool thing to demo out and try out. So highly recommend you guys try it out. And those are my seven real tangible use cases of the Vision Pro itself. And that will just about do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there's a bunch of awesome use cases, and for the most part, it does revolve around media consumption. The productivity aspect is still a work in progress, in my opinion, and I am working on a video talking all about why iPadOS really birthed what VisionOS was, because a lot of the stuff that we see on VisionOS is very reminiscent and very familiar, both from an actual physical use case and kind of look and feel from a UI and UX perspective, but also in terms of like productivity limitations and software limitations and things like that. So definitely stay tuned for that video. I'm super excited to talk about that because my iPad is my main computer and I want to show you guys exactly what I mean from going from iPad OS to Vision OS being so similar. But if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below. Let me know in the comment down below also if you picked up a Vision Pro, are you planning on it? Have you done the demo? Do you see the appeal? Do you think it's overblown? Let me know in the comment down below. Always curious. But until next time, I'm Fernando and I'm out of here everybody. Peace. Thank you.